You tuned into all this math. And if you're wondering, the CU you see on my sweatshirt stands for Cheney University. Cheney University, a historical black, historically black college located in Pennsylvania, which used to back in the day in 1837 when it was founded, it used to be located down South Philly, right? Um, some great people, some great historical figures such as Octavius Caddo and Fannie Jackson Coppin worked at the Institute for Colored Youth, which is what it used to be called when it was located down South Philly. Um, later on in its existence, it relocated out to the you know suburban area, um, kind of rural type area out in Pennsylvania where it is right now, um, where I currently teach as well. So, you know, I teach math at Chain University. So I'm proud to be able to say that I carry on that type of tradition, um, educating um, African-American people in the United States. So moving right along, and I think this sweatshirt is kind of fly. I liked it, you know, when I, when I saw, you know, they had these on campus, I was like, yo, I gotta grab one of these, right? But at any rate, moving right along, today's lesson involves scientific notation, scientific notation. Now, scientific notation is something that we use when we're dealing with real big numbers and when we're dealing with really small numbers, right? That may um, utilize a lot of decimal places, right? We utilize scientific notation. Now, we can also multiply and divide, add and subtract, you know, numbers that are in scientific notation. In this particular example, we're going to be multiplying two numbers that are already in scientific notation. So we have four times 10 to the ninth power, and we also have 3.5 times 10 to the eighth power, right? So if we understand the exponent rules, because scientific notation and the exponent rules go hand in hand. That's why a lot of times in a math class, an algebra one, algebra two class, maybe even, maybe even pre-algebra, when you learn about probably not pre-algebra, probably at least algebra one. But when you learn about the exponent rules, you may also, within that textbook, in that same section of the textbook, you might do some problems on scientific notation because for real, for real, the rules are basically the same, or there's a lot of overlap, I should say. So we know this is multiplication because you see the parentheses, right? And you see no symbol in between, right? So that's how we know it's multiplication. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply this four and this 3.5. So you kind of can think of those as like coefficients of a variable, right? The four and the 3.5. And then the tens, right? The tens tell you basically how many, how many zeros would be, um, or how many spaces the decimal point should be moved if, it, if the number was written in regular expanded form. Because what scientific notation does for us is it allows us to save space, right? Saving space. Because if you have an encounter a number that's, you know, it has a, a 10 factor of like 10 to the 58th power. That means you might end up with, you might have like 58 zeros in that number. Like, would you really want to write out 58 zeros? No, you wouldn't want to do that. So you want to use scientific notation, you know, to make things more concise and to be more efficient. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to multiply this four by 3.5. Now, I could break out a calculator, but I like to do this type of math mentally. Four times 3.5. I think a 3.5 has two different parts. I think a 3.5 is a 3 and a 0.5. A 3 and a 0.5. And I'm going to multiply 4 by each of those parts, each of those two parts. So I know 4 times 3 is 12, right? Because I know my multiplication facts, and you should too, right? So 4 times 3 is 12. And I also know that 4 times 0.5, which is the same thing as a half, 4 times 0.5 is 2. So I take my 12 and I take my two and I add them together and I get 14. And basically what I just used was something called the distributive property. You probably heard of the distributive property, but you might not have ever thought of using it in that way. So when you do mental math in that way, you're really using the distributive property. So that's why the distributive property is not something to run from. It's a very important and valuable tool that we use even in mental math in every day of our life. You know, whenever we're doing basic and regular calculations. So this 4 times 3.5 is going to become 14. Because like we said, 12 plus 2 is 14. Now, these tens, they get multiplied together, right? They're the same base. They're both tens. And we use something called the multiplication rule of exponents. Remember I told you, using scientific notation, exponent rules, they go hand in hand. So 10 to the ninth power times 10 to the eighth power. We write the 10 one time. 
but we do not multiply the exponents. Do not multiply the exponents. Don't do that. We want to add the exponents. When we utilize the multiplication rule for exponents, you add the exponents. So we're going to do 9 plus 8, not 9 times 8, 9 plus 8, which is 17. All right? So now we have 14 times 10 to the 17th power. But we have an issue. This is not in scientific notation because scientific notation states that our initial number must be between 1 and 10. It must be at least one. It must be um, at least at lowest one. And it can't be great. It can't be 10. It can, it can be 9.99999, whatever. But it's got to be less than 10 and one or greater. So 14 is greater than 10. So 14 is no good. So what we have to do is put 14 in scientific notation. At least this is one way to do it. This is the way I like to do it. It's kind of some people would consider this the long way. Right. But it ain't that much longer than, you know, the shortcut that they might tell you. Right. But it's cool either way. If you learn that shortcut, but I'm going to take 14 and put it in scientific notation. So what I do is I think about where the decimal point is in 14 right now, right? There's an invisible decimal point after this four. So in order to change this into a number that is one, at least one, but no greater than 10, I move the decimal point one space to the left. So this is going to become 1.4, right? And then I put a multiplication sign and then I put a 10, right? Now you might be wondering, well, what are we going to do with this 10 to the 17? We're going to leave that alone for right now, right? But right now, we're going to leave that alone. Right now, we're dealing with the 14, all right? So we got 14, that turns into a 1.4 times 10. And then what is my exponent going to be? My exponent is going to be a 1 because the exponent should represent the number of spaces that we would have to move the decimal point to get back to the original number, to get back to the original number. So... I would have to move this decimal point one space to the right to make this a 14 again. So one space to the right, that's represented by a positive one. So we got 1.4 times 10 to the first. 1.4 times 10 to the first. So 14 is the same thing as 1.4 times 10 to the first. Now that 10 to the 17th, now I'm going to bring that back into the mix. Now I'm going to bring that back down and because this was being multiplied by 10 to the 17th, now this turned into this, so now this gets multiplied by 10 to the 17. So now in order to put this in scientific notation, the proper way, we got too many 10s, but we can use the exponent rule of multiplication or the multiplication rule of exponents. And just, we got a couple of 10s, so we add these exponents, just like we added these exponents. So now we're going to have 1.4 times 10 to the 18th power. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our final answer. 1.4 times 10 to the 18th power. So for our next problem, right, dealing with scientific notation, we have to, well, this doesn't even look like we're dealing with scientific notation. What it looks like is just a fraction with one number in the numerator, one large number in the numerator, that is, and two numbers, two, two numbers in the denominator, one of them being a decimal and the other one not a decimal. But our final answer should be written in scientific notation. So let's do this. Let's, uh, I think I'm going to convert each of these numbers into scientific notation, right? From expanded form into scientific notation. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to deal with this numerator. This 135 million. So one of the rules for scientific notation is that our factor, right? which is our first number, must be at least one, but no greater than 10. 135 million is much greater than 10, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to play this game where we basically call slide the decimal point. So this has an invisible decimal point at the end, and we're going to slide it over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spaces. And this is going to become a 1.35, a 1.35, right? So this is going to be 1.35 times 10. And then the question is, what exponent is the 10 going to carry, right? The 10 is going to carry an exponent that is equal to the number of spaces that I moved the decimal point. The exponent, the 10 is going to carry an exponent that is equal to the number of spaces that I moved the decimal point. So I move the decimal point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 spaces. Eight spaces. 
Now, I would now then the next question is, should it be a positive E or should it be a negative E? Because your exponent could be positive or negative. It's going to be a positive E because you care about how many spaces would you have to move it to get back to the original number. The original number was 135 million. Now it's 1.35. So positive E means I'm moving to the right. That's how I get back to 135 million. If I move to the left, I'm creating a smaller decimal, right? So that's what would happen if I had a negative E. So that's how you know if you should have a positive exponent or a negative exponent. Which direction do I have to go to get back to the original number? So I got 1.35 times 10 to the eighth. Boom. And then I go to the denominator. I'm going to do something with this 0.009. So I'm going to move the decimal point three spaces. That's going to be 9.0 times 10. So if my decimal point went from here to here, that's three spaces. But to get back to the original number, I'd have to go to the left. So that means I have to go in the negative direction, like toward the negative numbers on the number line. Right? So therefore, my exponent should be a negative 3. Right? Negative 3. Now, 6,000. This has an invisible decimal point at the end. So therefore, I got to move the decimal point one, two, three spaces. So we got 6.0 times 10 to the third, positive three, because I'd have to move the decimal point three spaces to the right to get back to, to, to 6,000. Boom, there we go. So now all of our numbers are in um, scientific notation, right? And they're in scientific notation. And what we want to do is we want to use exponent rules now to either multiply or divide the numbers that we're dealing with. So basically, I'm going to do, let's see, 1.35. Let's do this. Let's go down vertically. So I got 1.35 times 10 to the eighth. I'm going to multiply these two together. That's what I'm doing, multiply these two together. So now I got 9 times 6, which is 54. So that's 54.0 times 10. Multiplication rule, we add the exponents. We add the exponents. So negative 3 plus 3 gives me 0. So that's 10 to the 0 power, right? Um, but I got to divide 1.35 by 54. I got to divide 1.35 by 54. So let me go get my calculator so we can do that. Oh. So I got my calculator. I had to go grab my calculator. I got this calculator from KDW Cares, one of their fundraisers. You know, shout out to KDW Cares and the work they're doing in the community. You know, Sada loves this calculator, by the way. Right? So I'm going to grab this, John. Right? We're going to do 1.35 divided by 54. 1.35 divided by 54. That equals point. 0 0.025, point 0 0.025, all right, so we're going to write that, we got 0 0.025 times 10, and then we're going to do the division rule of exponents, which is 8 minus 0, right, 8 minus 0 is just 8, so I got that, but this is not scientific notation. The reason being is that this number must be, if this were scientific notation, see, it's not just scientific notation just because you got to multiply by 10 to an exponent. That's not all of it. That's part of it, but that's not the whole deal. You need for this number to be at least 1, but no greater than 10. This number is less than 1, and we got to know that. This is less than 1. So what you got to do is you got to slide that decimal point in order until you create a number that is at least 1. So if I go 1 space, I got 0.25. That's like a quarter. That's 25 cents. That's still less than a dollar. So that's less than one. So we got to keep moving. So then you slide it again. Boom. Now you got 2.5. That's cool. 2.5 is cool because that's greater than one and less than 10. It's in between one and 10. You know what I mean? So now we got 2.5 times 10. I'm going to just put this part in its own scientific notation. And then we're going to bring the 10 to the eighth back into the mix a little later, right? So 2.5 times 10 to the negative 2 is negative 2 because 
I would have to move two spaces to the left to get back to the original number. I would have to move two spaces to the left to get back to the original number. So 2.5 times 10 to the negative 2 is the scientific notation representation of just this number right here. But then this gets multiplied by 10 to the eighth. So you're going to bring that 10 to the eighth down. Bring that back into the mix. Right? So now we're going to use the exponent rule of multiplication to combine these two. So then we got 2.5 times 10 to the 6th power. Why is it to the 6th power? Because the multiplication rule of exponents tells us that we must add the exponents. Similar to how we did up here. We were multiplying these two numbers, so we added these exponents and got zero. Right? And the reason that I didn't just, you know, straight just change this into a 1 right there and use the zero rule of exponents is because I knew I still had to divide this numerator by this, de this denominator. So I was like, you know, let me just, and I knew my final answer needed to be in scientific notation anyway. So I was like, you know what I'm saying? Let me just, let me just keep it moving. I'm not going to mess with the zero exponent rule. I know I'm, let me just do my division and try to combine the numerator and denominator, you know, by through division and then just keep going. So this is the final answer right here. 2.5 times 10 to the sixth power. So again, I just want to reinforce this idea that you know, exponent rules and scientific notation, they go hand in hand. They're not, they're not difficult. You know, they can be tedious at times, but it's not really difficult. It's very manageable, you know, but you got to practice. You got to put in the time, you got to put in the effort, and you got to do the problems, all right? Now, if there was anything you didn't understand about these problems that we went over in this video, please rewind, please pause, please go back, you know, um, you know and then take use this video as a reference when you're doing some subsequent problems, right? When you're doing your homework problems, when you're doing problems in the future, all right? Again, well, not again, because I don't know if I said this earlier, but if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, please subscribe to the channel. Please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Also, share these videos. Share these videos. Go ahead, copy the link, send them out, text somebody. Somebody needs to know how to do problems dealing with scientific notation. Somebody needs to know how to use exponent rules, and that's what we're doing here and all this math YouTube channel. We're doing that type of work. I want everybody to know how to do math, right? You know, I don't want people to be stuck no more because what happens is people go to school, um, they get a lesson. If they don't understand it in class, they just say, forget it, right? Now you don't got to do that no more, all right? So this is another resource that you can use, right? It's for the community, for the people, right? Another resource we can use to kind of, you know, gain clarity on a lot of things that we might not understand when, we, when they first get explained to us. All right. So thanks for tuning in. And until next time, peace.